Science is a methodology that's used to counter our own natural biases, to eliminate what's wrong in current or hypothetical thinking, and to get as close to the truth as we possibly can by way of designing or running tests, standardized and meticulous observations of what we find in nature, in the sky, or in the ground. It is a collection of highly trained individuals trying to poke holes in each other's ideas, and people trying to poke holes in their own ideas preemptively to prevent their ideas from looking bad. However, science is not perfect. It's made up of individuals. Some may be lazy, some may have power or esteem, and the politics of the institutions make it difficult to challenge them or move forward ideas or projects until after that person dies. Until the internet, it required journal publishing that really only felt like publishing the more groundbreaking studies and not the ones that replicated or countered other studies, unless it was very groundbreaking. Boring but necessary was not in. We are slowly working to fix that, and thanks to online journals, it has made it easier to publish the boring stuff. However, often because of that slowing, some will take it to the other extreme and take their ideas to the public without proper merit. This is called pop science. Pop science is wonderful in the fact that it creates science enthusiasm, which we need to help get the government on our side and move us forward as a species. But at the same time, it's a great area for people to go out of their depth and write books and articles that sound brilliant and exciting, creating a framework to better understand reality with, and put it all into a neat little package. It's freeing and liberating to think that we understand this and are part of this knowledge along with the scientists in their field. The problem with science is it is the most exciting and at the same time the most boring thing in the world. It has to be boring in how you write about it or your own biases get in the way, but at the same time you have to make it exciting and amazing or no one will be interested and money for science will drop. It's always a fuzzy line of complexity that hounds science. Take for example when you should and shouldn't trust science and when you can decide for yourself. The average person is told to always think for themselves and question, but then they're told we should trust scientists to figure it out, as that is not our field of knowledge. We know that if we were to go through the training and had the money, we could go and replicate the experiment and see if we could get the same results, and that people do that often. The problem is, we can't if we want to do other things, so we have to trust the system. That's how division of labor works. And here's where it comes to a head. There are many writers with PhDs that people are trying to trust that are being bad scientists who go outside their fields. Well-established people who create breakthroughs will often get very addicted to being right and start going down rabbit holes of unscientificness outside their field, then feel threatened when the ideas are attacked. Many great scientists went on to have really wrong ideas later in life, including Einstein and Tesla, as once they achieved godlike status, people stopped questioning and disagreeing with them as much, and it became easy to live in a bubble of yes people who would never question them, or do so on a much weaker basis in fear of angering their hero or superior. Heimlich, whose maneuver bears his name, is a clear example of this. After saving millions of lives with his amazing simple maneuver, he felt himself a god among men. With all the letters coming in thanking and praising him for the lives he was saving, he started trying to figure out the next great life-saving thing and seriously started to go down the rabbit hole into obscure areas lacking evidence and dwelling in the realm of conspiracy and hidden agenda, such as a cure for AIDS and cancer using another potentially deadly pathogen. He was also very vocal about things that were not in his field and probably ended up hurting a lot of people with pseudoscience. A year or two after graduating, I was loaned a book that changed my outlook on much of reality. It was called The Third Chimpanzee by Jared Diamond. Many of you have probably heard of and probably admire him. However, Jared Diamond, I'm finding out, is not an anthropologist. He's a physiologist and a geographer. And while this much education requires you to have a toe dipped in many fields with a lot of tenure, his book is about 50% scientific and the rest is personal ideas, one-sided claims, and anecdotes he uses. It's just sciencey enough that everyone, including scientists outside of anthropology, love his work, but inside the anthropology society, they are frustrated at him. For one thing, he states as fact things that are up for debate in anthropology community, as if it's settled and agreed on by the majority. 
He stated flatly that the megafauna in North America and Australia were killed off by man. Even at that time, the science community was debating it, and nothing was solid. And now we're finding out that it may have been true about a minority of species, but not about most of them. It was climate change and other factors. We're finding more and more paleontological evidence in the past 20 years. And his books are just filled with these one-sided claims, and drawing off of that, he makes other inferences to make other certain or semi-certain claims. This is the biggest reason why evolutionary psychology community is not taken very seriously or is held at arm's length by the scientific community. Science is slow and conservative for a reason, mostly because if they have to change, they want people to know that yes, we knew we weren't very certain beforehand, and this new development, while surprising and exciting, wasn't completely unexpected. If they had been blindsided by the complete change in course on an idea, the general public would begin to question things that are the bedrock of science. This is why certainty used in American science news is so damaging to the credibility of science. As the average person thinks, scientists don't know anything, they keep changing their minds, while science itself has degrees of certainty, and new research and discoveries are hardly certain, but very interesting and exciting. This hybrid of science and pseudoscience, or maybe we should call it certainty science, has leaked over into YouTube and the general public, without the basic understanding of the scientific process. As some may remember, I made it out of college with a BS in microbiology without a clue as to how the scientific process works. In hard sciences in the U.S., they're so busy cramming you with facts and techniques, many students don't actually run into the scientific process and peer review until they get to their master's program. The softer sciences and some rare good high schools are the only areas where it's mandatory to know this. I believed as a scientist I could learn a fact about science from a study that unknown to me was not an established fact, it was a paper that needed more research, and then from that fact infer other things. Each preceding layer has to be established and tested first before you can state anything higher level as fact. This form of certainty in pseudoscience has disseminated its way all over YouTube and the internet. If the average American had a firm foundation in skepticism, the basics of how science worked in critical thinking, we would all be in a better place, but sadly most of that is self-taught for a lot of us. And as Mitch Hedberg said, I taught myself to play guitar, but I was a shitty teacher because I did not know how to play. 